जय हिंद टू ऑल माई सेल्फ शिखा अग्रवाल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन आई टी डिपार्टमेंट अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू अबाउट अ क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग इन अ क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग वी आर गोइंग टू कवर अबाउट द टॉपिक दैट इज अ क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट विद क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स वी शुड बी अवेयर अबाउट द टर्म वॉट इज क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग क्लाउड एंड कंप्यूटिंग If I'm using the word cloud, cloud means it can be a network through which can can access through the internet. If I'm talking about the cloud computing, it also refers to the means of accessing any applications through the internet. It can be available on everywhere, which you can through which you can access the data remotely. If I'm talking about the term cloud computing, it also refers to the manipulating, configuring, and accessing the hardware and software resources remotely. Simultaneously, it also offers the online data storage space, simul and infrastructure and applications. Now, see if I am talking about the cloud storage, then we can say this is an architecture through which we can do the cloud computing. Suppose we have a three parameters. First is storage. The second we have an application, and the third parameter is infrastructure. This is the way how we can generate a platform through which we can access any amount of data. and we can say the cloud computing also offers the platform independency as the software it is not required to be installed locally on the pc whenever whatever the things we are installing on our pc we can access the data easily from anywhere and any location and simultaneously we can say cloud computing makes our business applications mobile and collaborative because through the using the cloud computing we can make our mobile app, we can make our applications easy so that we can be access and from anywhere any location and simultaneously it is also dependent on a it is not dependent on a platform why because we can access the data by a pc we can access the data by our mobile phones we can access the data through tabs also so let's talk about the cloud computing characteristics there are the four major characteristics of the cloud computing if i'm talking about the major characteristics there are the four five major characteristics on which we are going to talk about today there are the various common characteristics of the cloud computing also like we have a massive scaling through which we can do the scaling up and down simultaneously we have an homogeneity in which we can simultaneously mixed up the files of same data type third is we can talk about virtualization also in the case of virtualization whatever the data is being worked it is being gone through a vmm layer then we can work on a low cost software that is not compulsory for all the clients that they need to uh, upload the softwares they need to access the softwares data they can easily the access the data through online mode also then we can the resilient computing resilient computing provides the providing the resilience power to the system then we are talking about a geographic distribution as i have already told you that we can access the data remotely so it's in spite of thinking about the geographical location you can access the data from any location simultaneously it is called as a service orientation if i am talking about the service orientation service orientation means we are having a three types of services public private and hybrid so sometimes the data is being available publicly privately and in a hybrid mode also then we are talking about the advanced security if i am talking about the security whenever the data is being accessed through the cloud computing we can provide the security too why because due to the security we can easily access our data and our data should be in a safe mode now we are going to talk about the essential characteristics of the cloud computing the first access is on demand self service when i am using the word on demand on demand means whenever you demand you can use the self services it means it allows the users to access the web services and the resources on demand they are not able to purchase any resources they are not able to be dependent on those resources through which whatever they will purchase whatever they will access they will have to pay only for that amount of road so whenever i'm talking about the on demand self service we can say whenever they will log in onto the website any time and you can usually use them and once they will use them and they can easily access them from any location secondly if i am talking about the broad network access see if i am saying that cloud computing is completely a web based 
we are completely dependent on the web services so we can say we can access the data from anywhere any location any time and we are not dependent on any particular areas that we have to uh, move to the remote area or not we can access our data anyway the third is resource pooling when i am talking about the resource pooling pooling means we have to share the resources and we can say when i am talking about the cloud computing they are having a multiple tenants each and every tenant can share the resources and all the resources is to be shared among them and once their resources is being fulfilled when their demand is to be fulfilled it is being back to the client then we can say we can share the single physical instance of hardware also we can share the database also and simultaneously we can share the infrastructure also whatever the resources we required we can share each and every resources among the multiple tenants and those tenants they are not aware about each other that whosoever is accessing our data once we are using the data it means we are accessing our data that means i am only the resource person who is using that resources next if i am talking about the next topic that is a rapid elasticity rapid elasticity it means if i am using the word elasticity it means we are talking about the scalability that we can scale up and scale down the resources at any time according to the need of users whenever we are having a number of users is being increased then we can increase the demand then simultaneously if we are having the less number of users then we can decrease the resources it means we are completely dependent or we are not completely dependent upon the resources we have to provide the resources to the customers at that particular point of time whenever they are required according to their demands for example if i am talking about a shopping website whenever they are doing the shopping sometimes they are uh, shopping websites are providing the providing the uh, requirements of the customers they are providing the discount offers so during that duration what happens the clients are more they are more accessible to require that services so simultaneously what happen some requirements are to be accessed then after that we are talking about the measured services if i am using the word measured services it means all the services is being controlled and monitored by the cloud service providers there are the various cloud service providers like google microsoft google azure aws etc and they all are providing the various services to the users and when they are providing the services to the users it means they are only the owners of those providers so they have to maintain they have to monitor and simultaneously they have to control all the resources in respect to the providing the services to the users simultaneously if i am talking about the major services we also cover about resource optimization billing and capacity planning etc first of all we talk about the resource optimization it means whenever the resources is being demanded once the n number of clients they have demanded for the resources so they have to optimize how they have to provide the resources to all the multiple tenants they have to make the configuration that how they all the resources is being accessed by the multiple tenants simultaneously they have to manage the billing also they are trying to uh, provide those services in a very low cost model simultaneously we can use the word pay as per you go model when we are talking about the as per you pay it means whatever the resources whatever the services you are using it that only you have to pay for it and simultaneously if i am talking about the capacity planning see when we are having an n number of users and by the next year or by the end of the month they are capacity is being increasing the number of users are being increasing so they have to make their infrastructure into that form so that their resources is to be available and more number of resources and more number of users can easily demand for it and they can easily provide the resources to the n number of users now we have talk about see we have talk about the essential characteristics so first is on demand self service we have cover then we are talking about the broad network access then we talk about the resource pooling then we talk about the rapid elasticity and we have talked about the measured services these are the various services these are the various characteristics which is playing an important role when we are talking about the cloud computing 
After that, if I am talking about the cloud computing, there are the two more characteristics which is being a very essential when we are talking about the concept of cloud computing. The first topic is elasticity. If I am using the word elasticity, it means we can easily increase and decrease the demand of the computer processing, computer memory space, storage spaces, so that we can meet the demands of the users. Then simultaneously, if I am talking about the elasticity, we can talk about one example. For example, suppose there are n number of users, they are providing their requirements and after a certain amount of time, their demand is to be increased. As I have given an example about down, uh, using a flip card shopping. For example, if I am talking about they are providing the discount sales, obviously their sale will be increasing. Their demands is to be increasing and simultaneously if they are not providing it, their demands are to be decreasing. So, in that case, they have to maintain their computer processing speed also. They have to maintain their memory storage space also because they have to create a new new spaces. So, they in the bulk, they have available memory space and simultaneously they should have a storage resources also. Whatever the resources is being on demand by the clients, they should be available to the resources. Then we are talking about the C, when I am talking about their demands, they are not worrying about their capacity, planning and engineering peak usage. Then whatever the capacity they are required it, they are not thinking about it and whatever is to be the demand by the clients or by the multiple tenants, they are easily providing to the users. When I am talking about elasticity also, in spite of only providing the services or in spite of only providing the demands, simultaneously they have to control the system monitoring tools. Whatever the tools, whatever the infrastructure they have developed, they also need to maintain that infrastructure. They have to maintain their system. Elasticity computing matches the amount of resources allocated to the amount of resources actually needed without disrupting operations. There are the lots of operations like something is going on, something is demanding. So, in that case, they have to make the uh, proper uh, channelization of the resources whosoever we have to provide it for how much amount of time we have to provide it and these all are the demands of the providing those resources. Suppose for example, if I am talking about the cloud elasticity, one example I can say, suppose a company, they requires the cloud computing. The, in that case, if they purchase a cloud, they have to provide those resources, whatever their demand. And once the company avoid paying for the unused capacity and ideal resources, they does not worry about their investing. They are not worried about their maintenance because whatever they will use it, they have to pay for it. Whatever their storage space, whatever their ideal resources is to be there, they need not to pay for all those resources. And whatever the resources they are using it, they have to purchase it and simultaneously we have to maintain the additional resources, equipments and their services. Uh, moreover, we are talking about the elasticity. In this case, we are talking about the security and limited controls also because elasticity plays a very important role. So, we have to maintain the security too. Whatever the services we are providing it, we have to maintain the security also. So, this is all brief about the elasticity. Whatever the things, whatever the working patterns, whatever the computer processing we are using it, we have to increase and decrease according to the needs of the users. The next, we are going to talk about the on demand provisioning. If I am using the word on demand, see on demand means whenever we require it, we demand for it, right? So, it means the cloud computing also provides a one more characteristic which plays an important role that is an on demand provisioning. On demand provisioning means it refers to the processing of the deployment and integration of cloud computing services within an enterprise IT infrastructure. This is basically a very broader term which also incorporates the policies, procedures and an enterprise's objectives, resources to the cloud services and whatever the cloud services we are providing to our users, it always provides by the uh, cloud service providers. Those providers always incorporates with all the terms and conditions and undergoes an agreement 
through which they will provide and provides the solutions to the users whenever they are demanding it whatsoever their demand is they have to fulfill it and when we are talking about the cloud provisioning if i am using the word cloud provisioning whatever the services they are providing it they have to think about how they have to provide it what they have to provide it and when they are organization will use all those services what is the procedure they have to follow it so that we will get the resources available whatever the infrastructure they have designed it we have to think about it that all those resources which we are providing it how it is being provided to the n number of clients as i have already told you that when i am talking about the services it can be a public hybrid cloud products and solution when i am talking about the services there are the majorly three types of services the first is public right if i am using the word public public means which can be accessible all over the everywhere so means whatever the data is being available you can access easily there is no restrictions is to be provided on to that data that particular amount of data can be accessed from anywhere and from any location and moreover it is being applicable to all the multiple tenants all the multiple users they can easily access the data on the required second we are going to talk about a private if i am using about the word private private means confidential something which is being not accessible by all the users which is not being available free of cost some yes so if i am talking about a private so generally the data is of clients only the data is of certain organizations also right so if i am talking about the private data for example if you are having a gmail account right so in the case of gmail account what happens we are making our password to be more secure that is not to be known by any individual so then that case what happens we are not in the mode of that we can easily give our email ids to anyone which is being publicly accessible by anyone right and if i'm talking about the term private so password is not always shared with anyone the password is to be kept secret that we are talking about the private mode so is simultaneously if i'm talking about the organizations there sometimes these organizations have their private data also secure data also so in that they will not allow any client type of a client or a customers to access their private data third we are going to talk about the hybrid mode if i am talking about the hybrid services hybrid services means we are talking about the combination of public plus private if i am saying is the combination of public and private it means some part of the data is publicly accessible which can be easily accessed by any customers and some data is to be private which is being only accessible by the private of that organization the employees of that organization or we can say hybrid mode means it is the combination of the above two services right so if i am talking about the on demand provisioning there are the three types of delivery models in the case of on demand provisioning the first is dynamic on demand provisioning if i am work, talking about the dynamic there are the two ways of accessing an applications first is static and dynamic static means which is already being defined if i am talking about the dynamic it means whatever the resources we require it we always request to the service providers which is being executed at the run time whenever we required it then only we demand it that's why it is called as a dynamic because we are accessing all those resources on demand on demand means we are accessing all those resources means on the run time second we are talking about the user provisioning if i am using the word user provisioning user provisioning means we are talking about the users or the customers whosoever is a customer or a user they can easily access the data by themselves whatever the data is being provided on the platform whatever the data is being provided onto their websites that particular data is being easily accessible by any number of users and moreover the user can access their data by using their own devices like they can use their mobile phones also they can use their laptops they can use their tabs etc so they whatever the data they want to access they can easily access their data by themselves 
the third if i am talking about the post sale or you can say advanced provisioning advanced provisioning means the customer is provided with the resource upon contract or service sign up let's talk about a post sales if i am talking about the post sales it means i am talking about certain organizations there are the various organization who also purchases a clouds from the service providers so in that case whatever the resources they are required it in that case they have to initially sign up an agreement a sort of a agreement with the service providers they have to undergo a certain contracts that whatever the contract they will have to undersign it they have to purchase it and whatever their demand is those organizations have to undergo for it for example let's talk about a one cloud computing service provider there is a one cloud co computing service provider for example aws they are providing a clouds to the n number of organizations and for example if the one organization is purchasing their cloud on aws so before going under the or before undergoing for the resources demand they have to undergo for a contract so before going into the contract they have to sign a sort of an agreement which also consists of certain protocols rules and regulations through which they have to sign up and once they will sign up the protocols once they have sign up that contract then only that particular service provider provides the services to the n number of clients simultaneously the organization will also sign up those contract and they can easily purchase the services so, so we have talked about the characteristics now we are going to talk about the benefits we are going to talk about the advantages when i am talking about the advantages of cloud computing here we have listed some of them the first benefit is whatever the applications we are accessing as utilities over the internet as i have already told you we can access any number of applications but in that case the most important is that whenever the internet pro service is being available then only we can access any type of application from anywhere and on any location then we can manipulate and configure the applications online at any time as i have already told you that we are having an internet facility and once we have an internet facility then we can spend any amount of time to manipulate and configure any type of applications from anywhere and any location remember one thing that we don't require any types of software installation whenever we are manipulating or whenever we are configuring the applications we don't require to manipulate or to install any type of a softwares when i'm talking about the cloud computing online development and deployment tools see when i'm talking about the online deployment and development it means whatever the runtime environment we are creating we require only an internet facilities once we have created an tool and an environment so that we can provide to our n number of users that particular environment is through a generated through a pass model means platform as an independent service so whatever the services we are providing it is all being to be on dependent upon a pass model the next we are talking about the resources are being available over the internet in a manner that they all are platform independent as i am using the word platform independent it means any type of a client can access the data from anywhere any location by using any type of a devices then we are talking about the on demand self service see if i am talking about the on demand whosoever the client wants to use the resources they have to interact without interaction they can uh, use the self service whatever the resources is being available they have already pay for it and they can easily use it then we are talking about the cost effective because we are providing an optimum utilization of all the resources that's why it is called as an highly cost effective why because all the resources is being available to the users and they can interact with each other any demand so they all are doing the self services so we are not dependent upon the utilization then we are talking about the balance load balancing if i am talking about the load balancing see suppose there is a cloud service provider and they are providing the services whosoever they are providing it their loads is to be balanced but they are providing to the n number of clients and their load is to be balanced so that whatever the resources is being demanded they always provide to the n number of users all 
then we are talking about benefits so these all are the characteristics and benefits of cloud computing if i am talking about the benefits and the uh, benefits and characteristics of a cloud computing so these are the various benefits of using the cloud computing the first is application as utilities over the internet manipulating and configure online no software is required online development and deployment of tools is to be provided all the resources is being available on the internet though we did not require for the on demand then we are using the on demand self service whatever the services we are required it we are using it it is a cost effective because when whatever the services we are using it we have to pay for it the next is it is high efficiency reliable and flexible network because whatever the services we are using it we it is being providing the very high efficiency so in this case we have discussed a lots of benefits and characteristics about the cloud computing but whatever the application whatever the services we are using it there is certain a risk right so if i am talking about the risk related to cloud computing there are the various risks which is related to the cloud computing the although cloud computing is a promising innovation with various benefits in the world of computing yes that's true that we are getting of lots of benefits by using the concept of cloud computing we are more dependent on the clouds we are getting a better securities but when it comes to the world it means we are talking about the risk there are the certain risk also being provided in the case of cloud computing the first risk i am talking about the security and privacy security means whatever the things whatever the services we are using it is it secure or not and whatever the data we are sharing with others is it a privacy maintained or not that is the data is to be secure or not right so if i am talking about the security and privacy thus this is the biggest concern about a cloud computing since the data management and infrastructure management in the cloud is provided by the third party see when i am taking the uh, services from the uh, any cloud service providers in that case whatever we are doing it we are taking we are having a infrastructure but whatever the services we are working with we are taking from the third party so once we are taking the things from the third party so we have to handle that particular part of risk also because we have to share our sensitive information to the cloud service providers right so whatever the data is to be confidential whatever the sensitive information we have every data is to be shared among the cloud service providers so we once we share the data simultaneously we have entered into the risk second thing if i am talking about the cloud computing see highly we have to ensure that we are using a highly secured password to protect our account as i have already told you once we have shared i can give you an example of gmail like you can give your mail id to everyone right but you are not sharing your password and simultaneously once you are setting your password you are getting an options that you have to make a secured password which is being a uh, not to be shared by anyone so isi tarah simultaneously we are taking a password which is not to be shared and we have to use that type of a password which provides a high level of security any sign of security breach may result in the loss of customers and business see whosoever is providing the services obviously they have to maintain their customers they have to maintain their business and once if any customer needs to know that their password is to be hacked or someone else is known about that password obviously that service providers is losing their customers we are losing their trust so that's why we are not trusting uh, worthy relationships due to which we have to lose the customers and businesses second we are talking about the lock in remember one thing when i'm talking about the lock in it means whatever the dependent whatever the services we are using it we have to be logged all the service providers dependent on that particular cloud for example if the one uh, client is being shifting from one cloud service provider to the another cloud service provider it means we are completely dependent upon to that cloud then we are not depending and it is very difficult for the customers to switch from a one cloud service provider to the another because we have to extract all the features we have to extract all the ways how they are being providing the things so that's why we are making into a risk that we are having a one more risk that is a lock in problem the next is isolation failure if i am talking about the isolation failure 
इट मीन्स द रिस्क इन्वॉल्व द फेलियर ऑफ आइसोलेशन मैकेनिज्म दैट सेपरेट द स्टोरेज स्पेस मेमरी एंड राउटिंग बिटवीन द डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टेनेंट्स सी इफ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द टर्म रिस्क एंड इफ द देर इज एन आइसोलेशन फेलियर अकर्स वट एवर द स्टोरेज वर्क वट एवर द मेमरी स्पेस वर्क वट एवर द रूट वी आर यूजिंग टू यूजिंग द रूट टू शेयर द पैकेज अमंग द डेटा इन विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी एंटर इन टू द रिस्क बिकॉज वट एवर द वंस दे आर बींग फेल्ड एवरीथिंग डेटा इज टू बी लॉस तो वी मेंटेन द आइसोलेशन फेलियर the next is management interface comprise when i'm talking about the management interface everything is to be accessible by the internet only so in the case of public cloud providers the customer management interfaces they are accessible by the internet and whatever the public clouders are providing it we have to access easily from anywhere and any location so there is no security is to be provided in secure and complete data deletion it is possible that the data request for deletion may not be deleted so, see if i am switching from a one uh, vendor to an another vendor right so in that case what happens we are not we can only request our data to the service provider that you can remove from your file but may or may not be they have deleted maybe they have generated the replicated copy of those datas so we have already entered into that risk we can say that they can generate the extra copies of the data also but they are not available at the time of deletion right and this they are having a multiple tenants is to be destroyed means that particular disk which is being storing that data it is being shared among the multiple tenants also which makes our difficult to be manage our data somewhere we have entered into the risk thank you